So friends, I was talking about the economic theories, economic science and the Nobel Prize. So for that matter, it is very simple that if this job is given to a science student, an illiterate person like me, probably I can write a simple paragraph of this thing. Imagine if you have 10 rupees or 100 rupees for that matter, this has to be distributed to 10 people. What is the ideal situation? You are writing a proposing a theory. So you don't need a rocket science to understand that how the economy will be distributed. You can simply take the value 100 divided by 10 so that you give 10 rupees to each. So your economics is over. Even it is not 10 lines with 2-3 lines <clears throat> that can be completed. For that matter, one has to use his wisdom and knowledge to understand the society. Now the question is if you see that how our economy has been divided because all those things are coming. If you take 100% your total economy, if 80, more than 80% is being captured by a wealthy class, a bourgeois system, Jamindar system, monarchy for that matter. So now with 10% is capital is or wealth is captured by 80% wealth is captured by the 10% of the people, rest your 20% wealth to be distributed close to 79% of the population for this specific country. Here comes the inequality. If you are not addressing the top order who is holding the very big kind of wealth and we are talking about only 20% resources to be distributed to 79 or 80 percent people that is a too much thinking probably you will never ever able to bring the economy of the poor people up to that level so here is the conflict over there it is only the theory probably what is wrong in proposing theory and these are the loopholes probably in india for that matter globally the same situation so it is better to highlight those things being as a wise person who is stopping not to write, but they are not writing, not talking. They are only criticizing, talking about the poor people. Similar way, our economy, the, the kind of revenue that is coming from the GST and all, it is very negligible. You have 140 crores population, only few percentage, like you know, 10%, 12% maximum, people are giving direct tax and GST and other things. That is not a big amount of money. Rest 90% population is not paying any kind of tax. Whether those economies should think and sit and all those things that whether the expansion of the GST bracket can be enhanced. If it is enhanced by another 10%, your revenue will be more. But those things are agriculture sector is totally not under GST bracket. So, which products from agricultural sector under bracket, but direct whatever fruits and other things are coming, those are not from, again for the Land Reformation Act, these economists are not talking about the Land Reformation Act, which is actually mentioned in the Indian constitution as a, as a kind of a bill, it is there, it is not been applicable, except Bengal and Kerala and few small, small states like part of Punjab, they have adopted but land reformation act is not widely accepted friends my my point of discussion i have not talked about amorts and i told that they are under wrong philosophy of propagating micro and macro economics i want to say something over here is dr obijit Banerjee and his wife has established jpol foundation and worked on poverty elevation it's a poverty lab first time i could hear there's a lab called poverty lab and that is running on the donation, the millions of dollar donation from big, big corporate house like Bills and Mandela Gates Foundation, Australia, UK, the millions of dollars that has been pumped to JPOL lab. So, and globally they are operating. And for that, both Dr. Obhijit Banerjee and his wife got the Nobel Prize. It is a very good thing to know that kind of. My question is simple few thing that you don't need a poverty lab to eradicate poverty to understand the poverty. 
okay your bandhan bank microeconomics macroeconomics it is understood that but you have not taken in totality you have never ever questioned that whoever is holding the big amount of money and if it is proper distribution or not creating partial homogeneous condition also it will be wrong or wrong to hope that change will be there it is not possible that way so wealth captured by that's why i have brought the few prominent figure like stalin i have given example of china north korea and previous russia the many example i have cited that how people are accumulating wealth is is a single handedly if all the things are being captured then how do they the other people like you no know, poor people are be benefited it is very fraction of mind that's why globally there are so much inequality we need to reframe if economic science has to be given or respected the better theories to be proposed keeping darwin's theory of evolution in mind so i am not going to talk about what is darwin's theory of evolution theory of evolution of origin of species for that matter it is if you can take the each ecological freedom everybody has got a space and this is working on very nice equilibrium and ecological nobody is fighting they are fighting for food for each other there is a process similar way can we bring a economic theory keeping darwin's origin of species or theory of evolution whatever we say those things i think this is very much possible i am also making some kind of model on animal emotions animal behavior i was trying to understand micro macro economics auction theory emotions keeping charles darwin theory of evolution in mind i have taken nobel laureate's work and also nobel laureate from the climatic change they have got it how you can reduce the pollution many ways the animals model can be used the same models can be used for the human too their emotions and their behavioral pattern can be given probably a new economic dimension and sustainability model can be developed how bad it is if you give them incentive the poor people how they misutilize it and they get into very kind of bad habits in social life and create a very kind of nuisance and those things to be understood carefully and rather than giving incentive it is ideal to give a sustainability a good model to the poor people so that they are access to work if they work probably then everything will be resolved another thing is indian agricultural sector has to be introduced in many ways and a lot of moderation all has to be taken into consideration that is what my proposal in many place i have been talking about that part i made my recent document it's a more than 6 hours video talking about how to how i perceive india another 100 years probably so my ideas are very restricted to few domain areas as reforming the indian constitution which is the pillar of this foundation of the country and i have explained the role of ambedkar i have not got broad ambedkar into mind he is a great mind but he has written the indian constitution under his chairmanship in 1949 it is in parliament it has been approved that is known to everybody and it has been signed this is a law basically so there are some loop holes i talked about article 164 and uh, article 344 the reservation and another thing is the uniform civil code all those things your article 3 and 70 is out i am happy that modi government has done a brilliant job i'll talk about when i discuss about the modi why he should not be compared with anybody for that matter i have kept few ideas in my mind i want to speak on that direction so friends what i am trying to tell over here is very simple thing that i was talking about the jepal lab so this is for dr obijit banerji you are much more senior than me i have a lot of respect for you that you you have wisdom has reached you to up to certain level like mit we never ever dream for mit we are not that qualified we are very intelligent i told you i read history up to fifth 
10th standard i was just 15 years old kid i left history because i want to pursue science you are reading economics you are a great scientist i have the simple questions when you have developed your jpal foundation why do you need to have few things why need to have money from the others industry house to run your organization that is question number 1 question number 2 is very simple that why do you need a marketing guy or an analyst or a sales person in your organization in jpal foundation what is the role that you are defining you are giving lakhs of rupees salary 1.5 lakhs 2 lakhs salary per month they, they are not the ordinary guys who are coming into your organization or working for it they are also equally brilliant student they are working for the organization but why do you need a marketing person to run jpal foundation that is what it is not understood to me whether you have kept i am giving you options probably you can tell and use your wisdom to understand are you are giving this intelligent brains to bring business or interacting with different corporate house to have the fund raising or you have using those marketing guys for the property elevation they will go to small village and all and they will give cash intense incentives for that purpose you are keeping probably you can think and give your answer if you are access to this video so friends i am not getting into more discussion on this two nobel laureate i this two nobel laureate is destroying whatever indian economy the image in the global because they always feel they are they are not nationalist they are internationally they are focused and that's why they sometime internationally try to expose indian economy try to expose narendra modi's policy try to explain whatever things he does and these two individuals are sitting for many years and criticizing intellectually to modi government with different interviews or independent voice friends what i want to convey here it is if they wish to change the india they should come forward with their vision document or many things finally at the end of the day what is required you want to have a better idea better india so this is also your motherland even though you have written an american citizen right in the indian origin american citizen that is what he talks about i really do not understand what is this all about what is the purpose of having dual citizenship also maybe when you come to india your indianness you want to interact it is fine or when you go to us then the universalism is coming into picture probably i request both of them when you want to exercise your wisdom don't think that is a nationalism or patriotism in a bad sense we have every right it is being built or everybody is in to become a nationalist or to become patriotic for you might be the patriotism or nationalism is a bad thing so i want to again bring back why mahatma gandhi has got not the nobel prize the norwegian scientist what he has written very clearly i am going to talk about that so i told you dr muller he has written that mahatma gandhi is a dictator is a low level of politician with less iq and his freedom movement in africa is only restricted to indians he has not fought for the others black who used to suffer more than anybody that is what he is trying to tell it and he wants to say that it is too much nationalism that is built in mahatma gandhi his vision towards indianization indian product is a they have taken in a very conservative way so that's why they have not the got the nobel prize it is clearly mentioned over there so it's too much nationalism that they have allergy towards the nationalist i told you that why they are so much allergic when it comes to their own thing when they want to exercise that your power i think it is wrong thing to say that the nationalist are the bad element probably if you analyze critical way nationalism is a good thing what israel is doing i told in a different videos that why they are right in their own right to protect their history if you do not doubt the nationalism that's why because you are not nationalist that's why we are making all this left is criticizing government means they have different intention they want to break the wall probably that is what they are thinking that's why they are allowing everybody to get into the system 
So they are opposing the NRCs, CAA, because already it is there in our constitution that whoever wants to come back to in India, that provision has to be given. Only this government is doing the exercise. So they are allowing that everybody should come. They are thinking that all Muslim brothers and sisters, they also should come. Everybody should come. I wish they should read the constitution, this provision, whatever CANRC is talk about, let them be a little qualified and little in-depth analysis before criticizing this government. They are executing the plan. Similar way, Article 370 also, it is the same thing. So abolition, it was there is a temporary. I talked about how Dr. Ambedkar was not happy probably in later stage of his life. He is from Hinduism to Buddhism. He is switching over from one to another after 19, after making this Indian constitution, he got into in a spiritual mode and that mode is from Hinduism to Buddhism. Probably one can get into this thing in a little sensitive way. I made a separate video for that matter in many videos I have mentioned that he is a great mind, great analyst, analyst and great intellectual. So he should not be taken in a light of a very simplistic person that changing Ideology for a person is too much to think of and my question is that Article 370 has been abrogated. What about the reservation, what he was thinking for 10 years, my vision document. I, 10 years after 10 years, we have extended this thing another 65 years. We have increased the quota of reservation. There are many problems across India for job. If the reservation has to be continued, there are many countries not having the reservation. For a level playing field, we have given enough time now it has to be stopped because all those lower categories, scheduled tribes, scheduled tribes who are becoming holding the position now, the first generation, second generation, third generation, they are enjoying the benefit. So the good People who are coming from the general category, they are not getting the opportunity. That's why there is a real conflict. India is not having much more job. Millions of people, qualified people, they are sitting ideally. On top of that, whatever posts are coming, like a municipal corporation job, many times I have talked about. There are PhD application, statistics. They are going to work for municipal corporation job. A lot of friends of mine, they are working. They are Mathematics, MSc in statistics, they are working for a post office stamping job they are doing. What about India? There are jobless people, they are frustrated so that government should create a job opportunity for them. It's a different entrepreneurship program, that is what my whole idea. Friends, I was again deviating a little bit. I should not deviate because I've been speaking for a long time about the whole India, how things have been taken place. Probably I have zoomed down many things. I have talked about the economics part is the reason behind the introduction of economic science in 1969 is very calculated way of imposing certain things. So it is not a very wisdom of Nobel Foundation about I told you 50 years you won't be able to understand who is applying for the Nobel Prize in economics. Those are a very important thing to note that all kind of things are happening and Professor Muller, what he has talked about, why he has got not the Nobel Prize, Mahatma Gandhi. Similar way, Jawaharlal Nehru 12 times he has written, being as a Prime Minister, he is writing 12 times, too much to understand and too much to digest that Congress is how they are very kind of crazy about kind of a award. Those things are known. It is known and it is there in the public domain in the case of Bharat Ratna, how those Nehru or Gandhi family proposing their own name, getting Bharat Ratna award and it went for the Gandhi family. But what about the days I request Jawaharlal Nehru and his wisdom, wherever is there in this world or whoever the Congress follower like Mani Shankar Ayar, when he talked about Mahatma Gandhi is a chaiwala. He doesn't deserve, he is not also eligible to serve tea in the Congress meeting or working committee, wherever probably. This is a real insult to Modiji and Modiji is giving the right answer to Congress. That's why I told that Modiji should not be compared with anybody. He can be compared with himself, what is there few years back and what is the position. So 
Congress doesn't deserve or you should not. Please, you also don't compare with Modi ji to anybody. And moreover, I feel that Mahatma Gandhi is an icon. He is directly associated to freedom movement. Some ideology, I never say that is non-violence or Indianization is good thing. That few things probably one can take and Mahatma Modi and Modi's government probably is also appre appreciating those things and trying to propagate those things. What Mahatma Gandhi has done, what Modi ji, Modi government has done for Mahatma Gandhi probably inter Congress has not given that much respect except for naming some institute and all that way the I have told that how Mahatma Gandhi promoted Indira Gandhi, Jawaharlal Nehru promoted Indira Gandhi in the political act, how the nepotism came into the political nepotism came into the picture, how 70 years they have ruled more than we got freedom for 75 years, close to that, out of that only Nehru Gandhi family has ruled India, how many, Jawaharlal Nehru from 1947 to 64, how many years, 14 plus, Three, 17 years, similar way Indira Gandhi also ruled close to 14-15 years, then P.V. Narsimha Rao is the organ congressy, then who else? Dr. Manamohan Singh is close to 10 years, again 10 plus 5, 15 plus another 30-35 years. So 55, 60 years Congress has ruled out of 75 years means you have the major share and you have the major Bharat Ratna and everything that is been awarded. You have also sent your own name for Nobel Foundation to get the Nobel Prize. So in Indian freedom movement, there is nobody you have found that anybody, Dr. Shama Prasad Mukherjee or Iron Man, Dr. Patel or B. R. Ambedkar's name also you have not considered for the Nobel Prize. So they are also equally qualified. If you have a man of vision, Jawaharlal Nehru, probably you could have given a thought considering your own fellow colleague in Congress. So they have not also given respect for that matter. Again, friend, I told you those Article 164, Article 344. All those things, those are the black hole half, these are the black holes of Indian democracy. And Dr. B. R. Ambedkar probably given thought for a certain time frame, this has to be given, even Article 164. There are a lot of debates has been done in between 1949-1950 in the parliamentary debate where Ambedkar advocated 164 article with a six-month provision. New person is bringing probably this time. The political situation is you are a very kind of a good condition. People never used to think that people would misutilize those things. Since 75 years it has been misutilized, probably those things would go. Your Article 164 should go. Your You have Tintalak law. This law is now Modi government has done. It's a good thing they have done it. But the uniform civil post is the need of the hour. The reservation has to go, those three things probably in those area one can work. Probably in that direction one to see, that will be a great idea and great thing. My point was telling those three idea when Dr. Ahmedkar proposed. After that, it came as a Indian constitution, as a law. And after that, he went for a kind of a shift of his mind from Hinduism to Buddhism. Whether, again, I am telling this thing again and again, where there is some element of doubt, there are some force has told him to write those things very deliberate way or not, that has to be understood. There might not be any written document, but you can understand one human that how he is changing his philosophy, because philosophy of Hinduism and philosophy of Buddhism is totally different. It is more of more pure form. I told you that emotions is there in Hinduism is one of the Maya is there. Buddhism, all rational thoughts is 
filled with science and everything. That is the conflict. I am telling this thing that whether this is something to the emotions. His emotions has overtaken your rational thought process while writing this thing. Or somebody has told after that the own realization comes, then he felt that he has done probably things, but he used to see all those things. That, But he is also not respected that 10 years down the line, after 10 years, this article of reservation to be removed, that is nobody has done it. Similar way, Gandhiji's wish or vision that your Congress to be dissolved, what is established in 1885. The same Congress is continuing. Everybody feels it is the same Congress and present Congress are the same. It is not that way. So they have not respected Gandhiji in that way also that why they have not dissolved it. They feel it's the oldest political organization. It is simply a kind of a Emotions again playing into the picture to show that we are the very longest party and uh, if this party is not named as Indian National Congress, then National Herald and all these things will be in trouble, that is what. So I am not getting into that debate again probably. So that might be one of the reasons it's not uh, doing such kind of thing that after 1947, this Congress would have been different organization because what is Congress? Congress is nothing but a platform that platform to fight against the British. This is a common platform given in 1885. Friends, what again I am trying to tell over here, I have spoken close to, I am looking towards the time in close to 26, 7 minutes. I want to talk another 3 minutes. I want to end up this session. So, I, I hope those forces, these Nobel laureates intellectual is propagating many things and it is well accepted by the people and a lot of people that thinking that Modi government is doing very bad thing over here. So those bad elements, when intellectual are speaking, that is well accepted. So for Obijit Banerjee, for Amart Sen, that's why they always see and genuine their have like you know, in India, there are a lot of supporters of those intellectual great institute established by the Congress region like Jawaharlal Nehru University. So they are totally against CA and NRC. They want all those humanitarian ground Rohingyas to be brought into borderline. There should be since they talk about the boundaryless line, like you know, they want this boundary to be open, so everybody should get into India and they should be allowed for a chance to leave. That is too much thinking, so too much nationalism or too much universalism that whole world is your home. But my interesting find I have told in many videos, it is not easy to, very easy to talk about theoretically all those things, but it is very difficult at the end of the day. I told many questions to my learned friends, communist friend, can you allow 10 people at your home when they are hungry or they want to have shelter. If you have opportunity to do that, can you do that even? I told many times, question many things about boundaryless society, thinking idealistic level. It's something like that you are driving a car very sensibly and you met with an accident. So the other side who is also driving should be equally responsible or if he is having fault, similar way. If you think about universalism, how the other country world is seeing in that direction, if they are not welcome, that's why you are not able to get into the other country who is very protected. They are protecting their border, even for that matter, America, you know all those things, your India-Pakistan border, Indo-Bangladesh border. Why only our border to be open for everybody? You need to protect your own countrymen for that purpose. That is very important and relevant question. Forget about all those internationalism. These are all hypotheses to charge your intellectualism that you feel that I'm talking about everything. When I'm hungry, if I come to your house with 10 people, whether we are in a position to offer them food or not, that has to be understood. We have so much problem across the globe. It has to be seen in a different direction, like Israel, the way they are fighting. They are fighting for their own right. 
that is not well understood by probably many things and their nationalism is taken into different direction friends i don't like to continue more and in this nationalism debate probably rubinath tagore caught on crossfire where he is keeping two boats in his mind that's why he is not able to give full time for against the british he is one way accepting the knighthood prize and another hand when this same british doing the massacre he is surrendering his knighthood to british regime again this is a conflict if you if you don't like the british so you should be clear about i don't like it i don't like to accept any kind of award from you accepting and returning it it has got no meaning probably one can get little lot of hype in media and all that time it had happened that tagore has given up the knighthood so first point why you have taken same if you consider after independence this award opposi group same philosophy same operation modernda so they are against the modi government they want to give up all their award so first of all if you believe certain philosophy why that time you have accepted all the credit you have taken after that this trophy is now a kind of a trophy you want to return because you know at the end of the day even if you return the trophy till you will be same award either bharat ratna and whatever things are there those things will be there in the history so once you got it then go at same thing for dr amartya sen or probably whatever theory you have written probably you can think in a different dimension that what idea has given if you do not see economy in totality that what the world is facing that 80% 90% wealth is captured by the 5% of the world population you cannot have a better economy for that matter whatever theory you you want to write until or unless you are writing few things as a theory to get your clarity friends i have spoken close to 32 minutes i want to end up this economic debate i will be coming my next presentation the final one narendra modi why he should not be compared with anybody i'll finalize and finish my last topic thank you very much